Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today on Todos Santos, we're doing something a little bit different uh, for the 50th episode of this series. Uh, and that, of course, as you have probably noticed, based on the thumbnail and the title of this video, we're building a film studio. But before we get to that, I wanted to really quickly just extend this rail line. Uh, so I made a quick custom station using the tram station track and uh, just connecting it up to the main avenue with some invisible pedestrian paths. And that seems to function well enough uh, for our purposes here. And of course, visually speaking, it's all going to be uh, buried underneath some ploppable pavement, so we don't have to worry about how ugly it looks at the moment. Now we're getting started on the arrangement of the soundstage buildings. Uh, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do exactly. Um, I used a couple different studios for inspiration that we'll talk about those in a moment. But first, I just wanted to get a sense of scale and uh, where I want the various parts of the studio to go, because we're not just going to be putting these sound stages down and calling it good. We're also going to add a bunch of other stuff. The main set of assets that I'm putting down here are from the Hollywood Studios pack by Polygon, which I'll link down in the description if you would like to uh, check those out and potentially even build your own film studio. I had a couple false starts with the arrangement of the buildings, uh, so I decided to plop down some placeholders for the back lots that we're going to build later on in the episode, and then just try to figure out a sensible road network that would be able to quickly access those areas. Because of course you're going to have lots of uh, trucks carrying various uh, lighting equipment and uh, all that stuff from place to place, so you're going to want to have easy road access to all the locations on this campus. Um, and then from there, I'm trying to figure out what the best places would be to have the soundstage buildings, which are going to be clustered together in the center of the studio. And then once we have those arranged in a nice way, it's pretty straightforward to figure out where the road is going to go. I ended up having a gap in between two areas of soundstage, and we're going to fill that area with a few workshops where they would uh, do things like make props or costumes or fabricate sets or do post-production sound recording, editing, visual effects, really whatever on-site facilities they'll need to make a movie. Now for this arrangement, and really the build as a whole, I had to take inspiration from places other than San Juan for the most part, unfortunately, uh, because it seems that there's not really a film studio, or at least not one of this scale, in San Juan or in Puerto Rico at all. Apparently there have been a couple attempts, I don't know how serious they were, but there were a couple of attempts to set up a film studio of this scale or somewhat similar in San Juan, but uh, they've never come to fruition. There are plenty of movies filmed in San Juan and uh, just on the island in general, just not in this sort of studio setting like you would find in Warner Brothers Studios London, uh, which I used for inspiration for the layout for the sound stages and the workshops. And a little bonus is that after I finished this build, I noticed that there's a rail line that runs immediately under the land that the film studio is on. So I feel at least a little bit justified in having our rail line do the same thing. But the location that inspired this build in the first place was Cinecitta Studios in Rome. It has a storied and somewhat violent history that unfortunately I don't have time to get into too much right now, but it was long used for both Hollywood and European films such as the overrated Ben-Hur, Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita, which is probably one of the films the studio is best known for. More recently, it's been used to film The English Patient and Gangs of New York, which I think is a vastly underrated movie. Of course, there have been many, many other films and uh, some TV shows as well that have been recorded here, uh, but we're not going to get into that anymore. Unfortunately, we don't have time because we have to get into building this thing because it's going to be ridiculously big and detailed. But if you'd like to learn more, I'll try to find some reputable resource that can inform you on that and leave a link in the description. So go check that out if you would like to learn about uh, Italian movies, which you should because they're good. Now, one thing you'll notice with movie studios like GD Cheetah or like Warner Brothers or really any of the other big ones, you generally are able to go on a tour there. They'll have a visitor center that has various information and uh, memorabilia from different movies that have been made there. And then if you're lucky, they won't be filming and you'll be able to go and visit the sound stages, see some of the sets and see any backlot sets that are built and just to kind of see the ins and outs of how a film studio works. So I wanted to make sure that there was a nice, pleasant entrance area for all the visitors. And out front, I'm going to put down a big statue. Now in Cinecitta, which as I mentioned before, is pretty well known for Federico Fellini's films. They have a big statue that greets you as soon as you come through the front entrance. It's an interesting statue that's used at the beginning of Fellini's Casanova. I'll leave a link to the scene where that makes an appearance below if you want to see that. Uh, but what I'm using is this asset that I stumbled across on the workshop. And it's called the Sarawak Hornbill statue. Hopefully I at least sort of got that pronunciation correct. Uh, but it's a statue that you can find in the middle of a roundabout 
in Malaysia, which is a, kind of a different context than this, but I immediately fell in love with this asset and it's definitely my favorite asset on the workshop. So I had to include it somewhere and I imagined uh, maybe there has been a movie made here at the film studio or somewhere in Toto Santos where they use this statue for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the context would be for that, uh, but now they've repurposed it as a statue to uh, greet you when you come to visit the film studio. And again, that's the Sarawak Hornbill statue by Name Invalid. I'll leave a link down in the description. So if you want to, you can go download that and uh, put it in the middle of your roundabouts. I did think it looked a little bit awkward just to be standing on the grass, so I gave it a, a little platform so you could go walk right up to it and look up at it if you wanted to. And then of course we need a gigantic parking lot because this is a fairly car centric city. So I wanted to kind of represent that scale. This would be a very popular visitors attraction, I think both for tourists and for locals. Um, so they need people to be able to drive here. Uh, we're gonna have a separate parking area for employees later on once we get to the actual production side of the studio. Uh, but I really have been trying to include some of these larger lots in this kind of build. And I think it adds a nice visual impression when you look at the city from a distance. And I wasn't sure what to do with some of these blank spots, so I uh, occasionally here and there will add a few uh, low-rise buildings like this. I don't have anything in mind as to what it would actually function as, but there are some here and there that could be workshops or prop houses or whatever. I'm using the entrance from the Hollywood Studios pack as well, these nice arches. Uh, it obviously says Hollywood Studios on it, which is not the name that I would like to use for this. I don't actually have a name for this studio. Uh, if you have any ideas, do let me know and I'll consider them. But I just wanted to use those assets because they look really nice. And I uh, block off the main studio with some walls, and then there's a little side entrance as well. I'll probably come back later and cover up the name Hollywood Studios with some kind of object, convert it to a PO, and we'll put whatever name we come up with there. Unfortunately, I can't convert the buildings themselves to PO because I I'm fairly certain they're terrain conforming, uh, so that doesn't work with the PO mod. So we'll just have to do it uh, a little bit more tediously. Anyway, I wanted to spruce up this area, so to speak, with a few trees, of course, and some hedges, and just trying to add a variety of flowering and non-flowering trees. And again, just trying to make a pleasant area for everyone who's visiting. Now on the fringes of the visitor's entrance, we're gonna have the part where the road crosses over. So this is where, if you were taking a tour, you would go through this entrance, probably. We're going to add um, some tour vehicles going around in, in the form of a bus line um, so that we actually have these carts going back and forth through these security entrances on the side. And I didn't want to just secure that area. I wanted to secure the entire film studio because they obviously aren't going to want people getting in and uh, messing up their production, which is probably something they actually have to worry about. So I'm just using these simple concrete wall assets. The Chinichita studios have a similar wall around them, so that's why I used that. And I also took this opportunity while I was passing by to cover up the ugly landscape from the sunken rail station with, just with some plovable pavement. We're gonna spruce it up with some decals and props and stuff in a minute. I don't quite know why, but it was very satisfying to do this part. And then on the edge of the studio here, I thought they might want to put some, like some storage warehouses or something or workshops of some kind. You know, all the louder stuff they would want farther away from the central soundstage area. Now over around back, we have an employee's entrance. This is where you'd actually go if you, you know, worked here on making movies. The security they have at film studios is actually pretty impressive. And then I wanted to find the quickest way to connect this part of the road network up to the original road network that we placed down at the beginning of the episode. And then we're gonna plop down a giant parking garage and this would be for employees only. So we have that within the, the kind of secured boundary of the studio. So now that we've got the bones of the studio laid down, let's detail the front entrance. I wanted to start by adding a bus stop, so they ha at least have a little bit of public transit available to this location. And also there's a bus stop right in front of Chinichita, so I thought I'd uh, use that for inspiration as well. And I'm doing this sloping decorative wall uh, like I often do. Uh, I like having it kind of taper up and then taper back down and you get this kind of wavy pattern, which is nice. And adding a bunch of benches, because I'm just thinking sometimes you get larger bus stops around these focal points in cities, so it almost turns into like kind of a mini transit station. So I just wanted to do that here 
and uh, make it look nice and green with a variety of trees here. And add all the services you'd expect at a bus stop like this with some timetables, a map, trash cans, all that stuff. Now, because there's a bus stop on either side of the road, I also wanted to add a crosswalk. So we have just a crosswalk with a simple traffic light so that uh, occasionally cars will have to stop there and let pedestrians cross just in case anyone wants to take the bus route going the other way, uh, but still wants to access the film studio. We're going to decorate the avenue a little bit in just a second, but first I wanted to get started on the actual uh, bulk of the entrance to the film studio. Um, so I have this kind of fancy looking entrance that says Prugio. I'm not sure exactly what the context for that is, but I thought it was a really cool looking entrance. So we're going to use that and clip it together into different things to make it look a, a little bit more substantial. Uh, I tried a few different things at first, like we have this uh, Brazilian commercial building uh, that I thought looked nice and generic. It doesn't have any signs or anything. And we can also change the color to try to get everything to match. Uh, but I just, it looks way too imposing. I also found this prop that comes with a asset pack. I forget exactly which pack, but it's basically like a little sub building to something else. Uh, so I try clipping that together with some of these and that looks a little bit better. So I end up deciding to go with this combination. I also have these little like octagonal buildings that stick out. That would be like the ticket kiosks, I guess, if you're buying a pass to take a tour. Uh, they look a little funny, but I, I, I kind of like how the final thing ends up looking once we put a little bit more TLC into it to get it to fit into the environment. Like, for example, one thing we do here is add a little like employee entrance so they don't really need to go through the big uh, visitor's entrance. Also cover up the clipping between the various buildings with some plovable pavement and cover the whole thing with a bunch of different solar panels. I'm gonna skip through that, you've seen that before. I also added a ladder at various points to access the solar panels and while I was at it, I put some utility meters. I didn't want to just leave this avenue as it was, I wanted to decorate it a little bit. Um, and integrate the bus stop a little bit better. So what I do is I block all traffic from going on to the right lane here, then use IMT to add a decorative fence along the line, and then fill in that area using a filler, of course, and changing that to grass and just setting the right uh, shift on that fence so that it looks nice and even. And then also using IMT to add some trees. I could, uh, you know, take or leave that function of IMT. It's kind of nice in certain instances, but I don't think it's really a time saver comparing it to going in and plopping the trees yourself. Um, but you know, it's nice enough to have the option at least. I also did the same thing over on the other side of the parking lot so that there's kind of a little turning lane for those who are entering and exiting the lot. Of course, we also need to detail the entrance to the parking lot a little bit. So we have some trees here. I got this new set of uh, parking lot entrance props, which I believe are by Spence. I'll leave a link down in the description if you're interested in that. Just making it look like you'd have to, you know, pay a little bit to park here. So I'm just going to quickly finish up all these details, and I'll see you in just a moment. So now that we've got this front avenue part looking nice and snazzy, we're going to hop back behind the entrance and just do a few things to make this visitor's area look a little nicer. 
I thought the path, uh, even though it's the right texture and the right shape and everything, it didn't really blend in well, so I wanted to put down a few walls here and there. They're almost just partitions, just to make it look a little bit more enclosed and keep them separate as well from any of these uh, functional areas that we have back here. Like there's that little shed, um, and then right here have an area to store these golf carts that uh, they use to drive around the film studio. Again, we're gonna be adding some of those later on in the episode and we'll have them driving around and th it's actually kind of adorable to uh, see all these little things going around. And then of course, trees as well, because we want it to be nice and green and uh, welcoming back here, as I've mentioned a couple times now. I thought the walls looked a, a little too harsh on their own, so we have some hedges just to soften that up a bit. And this little dumpster area too. I don't know how the trucks actually get back here to pick it up, so that was kind of a mistake, but oh well. Also have a custom made fountain here just to break up this uh, diamond of pavement that happens at the uh, intersection of all these paths. I thought it might be nice just to have something decorative there to break it up a little bit and make it look a little bit less awkward. Now, if all these people are gonna be funneling in and walking along the paths, I wanted to have just a little seating area and maybe a bit of a guide as to where they need to go. So there's a big map there to have some information on what you can do on their tour here. And of course, some more trees because why not? And also a lamp, just in case it's uh, a little bit dark out. Okay, now let's get to detailing the functional part of the film studio. So I kind of just randomly set about putting down some details, um, and it really just evolved into setting up parking lots along each soundstage, which is not unrealistic because you need to move a lot of people around on a film set, um, but really like this soundstage part, it consists mostly of parking, uh, which is fine. I think it adds a nice bit of detail to it. And other than that, I did try to add a little bit of detail to the roads. So we have some walls occasionally and some green spaces as well with some trees just to fill in these gaps uh, without going into too much detail. Now for the parking, I did a mixture of decals and functional parking lots uh, just because I didn't want every single parking spot filled because you're not going to have every single sound soundstage active all the time. Uh, so I just initially put down a few functional ones and then most of them were gonna come back and fill in with details. We also have these stripes here just to show people not to park. I should probably actually have that in front of the garage now that I'm thinking about it. Um, so I kind of messed that up, but I, I really the point of this is just to break up the pavement a little bit and make it look interesting uh, without worrying too much about having it make perfect sense in terms of functionality. And so detailing the soundstage ends up being kind of just a bog standard, you know, detail and parking build. And a lot of the uh, more unique uh, film studio details that you might expect are going to come when we do the back lots, which are going to be a lot of fun to do. There are a couple slightly less repetitive things. So we have these uh, longer parking areas along the sides of some of these sound stages. We also have the little corner in between two buildings here, just a couple of adjustments there. And we also have this water tower. Now, basically every single part of a film studio is a big fire hazard. Uh, so a lot of film studios will have their own water tower like this. I also have a couple fire trucks there. I don't know if that really makes any sense, but there you go. Uh, so I'm just uh, putting some bollards at the base there and uh, some lines as well to show you that you probably shouldn't park there just in case there's a fire and they need to uh, get some water out of there. Now, going back to these warehouses or workshops over on the fringes of the soundstage area. I just wanted to break it up a little bit and make it look less uh, developed. Uh, so we have some dirt, damage decals, and some weeds growing up in between the buildings and the concrete wall. I also had this really big, ugly area of pavement that I didn't really feel like putting another soundstage or anything on. So I just kind of randomly put down some sheds and some uh, wear decals as well. I wanted to have a couple different places throughout the studio where they would uh, be staging props for whatever productions they're working on. So I took this little alley and just put down some covers there. There's nothing there right now, but they're basically setting it up so that they can cue a bunch of stuff to be shipped off to whatever set they're working on. 
I also wanted to make the roads that run through the studio a little bit more uh, pleasant and just kind of integrated into the pavement. Um, so just to break it up a little and make it feel a little bit more like an actual road, I wanted to add some of these planters in various places. Now, going back to this large building, I thought it would maybe be a part of the tour. So like, they don't really film much here, but this is where you would go to see, you know, a collection of props or costumes from old movies or whatever. So I wanted to make the entrance look a little bit more inviting. And I also put down a people generator so that it'll uh, have some sims attracted to the, the entrance. Okay, let's quickly finish off some of these more routine details, and then we'll move on to something more unique to the film studio. We have this set of studio numbers. Some of the soundstage buildings have them burned in, both on the roof and uh, on the fronts of the buildings, but there are also these generic blank ones that I use just to fill out uh, some of the area. So we're gonna go through and put those in a general kind of order. So you have stage one, stage two, stage three, and you can kind of trace a line through them so it makes sense that they would number them in this way in the first place. And if you'll remember back to that prop staging alley that we made uh, just a minute ago, I'm gonna add another sort of thing like that, which is uh, right next to the back lots that we're eventually gonna build, where they've queued up a, a bunch of random props that I thought looked cool. I don't know exactly what kind of crazy movie they're filming here, but it involves a lot of random stuff. And they just have it all staged here uh, right next to the back lots. Uh, we have prop plants, a bunch of cannons, uh, and it's all covered up with a roof. Oh, and more cannons. Now there are just a couple more things to do before we get to the back lots. So first we have uh, some more storage, except instead of for props this time, it's for vehicles. So we're gonna put down this kind of uh, detailed, ruined looking asphalt, which I thought just was kind of nice to break it up and make it look like a separate lot, and put down a bunch of vehicles that I thought they might want for different kinds of movies. Uh, a bunch of cop cars, maybe they're filming another Blues Brothers movie, uh, and just some other things that you might expect to see. I think it'd be cool maybe to come back and add some more vintage cars, like they film period pieces or something here. That could be kind of cool, but I didn't have the assets on hand at the time, so that's why I didn't do that. And next door, we have a dedicated lot for some artist trailers. So this is where uh, the big stars for whatever movie is being filmed would uh, hang out when they're not you know, currently working. Also have some people generators just to draw a little traffic to this area. Some golf carts where they're uh, dropping off or picking up the talent and a little tent there so they can go get some food or whatever, I guess. Uh, there's also a parking lot nearby so they can uh, park their expensive cars there, not have to uh, park with all, you know, the other plebs, who are consigned to the fate of having to park their cheap cars in the parking garage with everyone else. And because this is an area where people would have to uh, spend quite a bit of time, I wanted to spruce it up a little bit with some hedges and some trees, just to make it a little bit more pleasant to be around, uh, because there really is a lot of concrete in this area, so I'm just trying to break it up uh, when I have the opportunity. Film sets used to be quite a bit simpler than what we've built so far, so I wanted to have a nod to that with an old silent film studio. Here's an example of one in uh, New York, back when the American film industry was centered in New York. But uh, one of the most interesting features of these old studios is that they would have glass roofs and they would just use natural light uh, to light the subjects, instead of all the extremely complex and expensive electric light setups that uh, are used for the most part now. Obviously there are plenty of films still made with natural light, but generally not in a studio setting like this. So we have stage zero with a very simple glass roof. I, This is something I would have loved to have PO for, but I didn't have the mod at the time. We're getting it next episode, so pretty soon you'll stop hearing me whining about that every time I uh, encounter something that would have been good to do with PO. But anyway, we got that nice little studio. I thought maybe, you know, they still occasionally use it to make silent films in a nod back to the origins of their industry. Or maybe it's not used for that at all and they just use it as a normal soundstage or they just keep it there for historical preservation. Okay, I think I've talked enough about back lots like this one at Warner Brothers Studios Burbank. It's time to build our own.
we're going to build a few different types of backlots. I want it to go in order of complexity, so we're starting with the most simple, uh, which is a pool of water. So they can film scenes where the character is submerged in water, which is really hard to do with visual effects. Uh, of course, I happen to build it right on the sunken rail line. What are the chances of that? Uh, I got really frustrated and I was kind of blown away that that actually happened, but pretty easy to just take it over here and fit it into this little rectangular space that we have. And I think that actually works out pretty well for the arrangement. They probably wouldn't want this giant pool of water like right in the middle of the studio, so it actually works out a little bit better to have it kind of off to the side like this. Basically just using two levels of roads and some rotating walls. Now we're going to add some tiles to the bottom in a second, just because when I think of swimming pools, I think of tiles. I don't know why they're like that, if there's a practical reason or if it's just aesthetic. Uh, but I also wanted to cover it up with Surface Painter as well. So when I pull the camera back and the LODs pop in, uh, it doesn't just show grass uh, because the, the tiles don't really have an LOD that pops up at a distance. We have some ladders, of course, for access and some hilariously cute little life preserver props uh, just in case someone starts drowning, which, you know, hopefully would not happen, but just in case. I also have these water props, um, pretty straightforward. I thought they looked a little bit plain as they were, so I wanted to just make them pop that little extra bit by turning them blue with the repaint mod. Now, when you're filming in the middle of the city, uh, you're going to get stuff you don't want in the background. And I'm going to try to go easy on our editors here by giving them a giant green screen, just so they don't have to go in and mask everything out by hand, which is very annoying. And trust me, I know because I had to do it for this episode several times. Anyway, I'm using these green screen props, which I think are intended for like taking screenshots in game and that kind of thing. Uh, you're really meant to use it with PO to be able to size it to whatever you want. Uh, obviously, I didn't have PO at this point, so I just have to go through and place them by hand. And I'm also using these oil pipeline support props to hold up the green screen because they were right about the perfect size. The conquistadors would often design their cities in the new world in a grid pattern like this. And we did that in old Todo Santos based on the old town of San Juan. But an important feature that I failed to include is the central plaza, sometimes called the Plaza de Armas with a Plaza de Mayor or various other names. Here's the one in Old San Juan. I'm not going to be inserting this into our actual old town, but I wanted to build something just reminiscent of it here as a backlot on the film studio. Um, so if they didn't want to shoot on location for whatever reason, they could shoot their old town scenes. And this would be analogous to like the New York City backlot that you'd find at Warner Brothers, which I showed you earlier. So it's not meant to be extremely accurate, but I wanted to make it believable and give myself a chance to do this sort of build. I think we're eventually going to go back and redo the old town, and we'll probably incorporate some of these techniques uh, when we do that. I actually already redid the Old Town once, about 10 episodes ago, uh, but I've acquired a bunch more assets since then, and actually since doing this build as well. So I think we'll be able to do a better job. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to get some buildings down and get a believable Old Town backlot going. By the way, the music you're hearing right now is, uh, unfortunately it's not Puerto Rican. It's Cuban, because I couldn't find any Puerto Rican music that I have the rights to use in my videos. But it was recorded uh, in 1924, by Thomas Edison, who of course is also uh, well known as being one of the original filmmakers. And he would have worked in studios kind of like the silent film studio we made before. So uh, let's take a little listen to that and finish building the Plaza de Armas. <laughs> Oh, 
sentido mi querer Que te mata con tus ojos Que no me saben amar Que no me saben amar So when we eventually come back and fix our old town, I'll probably fix this as well. Just because of all those assets that I've acquired since then, uh, like I mentioned before. But one thing I'm not going to change is this central plaza area, because it's uh, not quite a one-to-one -one recreation of the old San Juan Plaza de Armas, but it's close enough that I'm really, really happy with how it comes out. Uh, so definitely not going to be making too many changes to that, if any at all. And it's always interesting to make these things using a reference and following the reference pretty closely. Uh, because if I were to just uh, build the plaza from my own imagination, it would be a lot different than this. Um, I probably wouldn't have like the caps of planters on the end. I would probably have it open on the end and then have the planters in the middle. There's this kind of random gazebo thing here. And then there are like these little squares that are uh, fenced off almost using potted plants. And uh, you have seating there. I don't know if that's like associated with... Uh, a certain restaurant or cafe or something in the area or if they're just kind of public seating area where anybody can sit if they uh, have some coffee or whatever um, but it's just generally like the sorts of arrangements of these things that you get in real life is at least quite different from what i imagine when i just kind of visualize a city in my head so it was pretty fun to do something closing in on a one-to-one -one recreation because usually i don't follow the references as closely as i did for this build just little things like this like fencing off the seating areas with potted plants i would never have ever thought of that i would just use like a wall or something or a fence maybe occasionally some hedges but i think it's probably a good idea to do that kind of recreation style build every once in a while because you're going to get these ideas that then you can integrate into builds that you just come up with in your imagination now, obviously, this isn't supposed to be a functional part of the city, um, but I did want to include lighting because I imagine, you know, if they were doing a shoot here at night, they'd want it to at least appear that there were practical lights lit up. Obviously, they're going to supplement that with their own onset lighting, but I just wanted to have those lamps there just for the little bit of detail and realism that they add. So I wanted to have at least one of our back lots uh, in use. So they're currently filming a scene here where this guy, <laughs> this guy runs out of the central hotel and falls to his knees and throws his hands up. It's like a super melodramatic scene from like a telenovela or something. Uh, and they have this guy up here on the cherry picker. He's supposed to be carrying a hose from that water tank and he's like spraying water down on the guy to represent rain. So there's like those puddle decals to represent that. Uh, I didn't actually have a hose prop to run up to the guy on the cherry picker. Um, so unfortunately we're just gonna have to use our imagination. I wanted to add a few different props. So we have a chair for like the director there. Uh, we have the camera crane. Unfortunately, the only props I have of people are construction workers, so I'm gonna have to download some more and come back and replace those so they're not all wearing like the bright orange safety equipment. Um, and then I also have these things that I guess are supposed to be like blocking out the light so they can get uh, the right lighting set up. And then of course, just to be kind to the editors here at uh, the film studio, I wanted to add some green screen to this area as well. Because obviously if they have an angle shooting this way, they're still gonna get all the random stuff in the back in the rest of the film studio, so it's easier just to cover that up with some giant green screens. All right, that's two back lots down and one more to go. As you might be able to guess based on what you're seeing on screen right now, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a castle backlot set. It's not just the castle though, we're going to have a little medieval village surrounding it. Uh, it's not going to be like super accurate or anything, I'm just using some cool assets that I found and uh, wanted to combine them in a way that uh, looks like something you might find on a film set. Maybe they have a long running medieval themed TV series that's uh, shot here and that's why they have this gigantic permanent set built up. And obviously they have a real castle in the city that they could go film at if they wanted to do some location shots like that. Uh, but if they want to do something that looks a bit more Mediterranean and foreign to the island, they could shoot here. Now the reason I wanted to build this in the first place is that I thought it would be kind of cool to have people driving by right next to the film studio see this just castle poking up from behind the wall and they'd be like, oh, what's going on there? 
I mean, they'd probably know the fact that there's like a film studio there, uh, but it would just be kind of funny to be driving through like a pretty heavily urbanized part of Toto Santos and just see this fake castle sticking up out of nowhere. I'm using these uh, houses. I don't think they're quite from the right era or of the right building materials in comparison to the main castle, but they were just the assets that I had at the time. And I, I think they work well enough. They kind of give the feeling that I'm looking for. The layout of this was inspired by the town of Scalitz in the game Kingdom Come Deliverance. Of course, it's a real town as well because the game takes place in a you know a real location. But uh, that's my experience with Scalitz is from that game. Uh, and the castle is up on a hill. You have the little town beneath with all these little houses. And then at the bottom, there's a central square surrounded by some of the bigger, more important buildings uh, like the inn. And then right there in the middle, we have everybody's favorite medieval entertainment, the gallows. Okay, now that we've got the main parts of the castle set built, let's do a bit of uh, most likely anachronistic detailing. <laughs> So my main intention with that part of the detailing was just to kind of blend everything together into the environment. Because when you have these really steep areas, especially in such a small location like this one, you get a lot of weird cliff textures and clipping, and then you have the switchback road, which of course uh, has some weird visual glitches here and there. So I just tried to use theme decals, specifically the grass decals, uh, just the usual mountain grass, and then some rocks of course as well, to make this look a little bit more cohesive. And then to make it look more alive, just have some fences, especially on the steeper parts of the road. And of course, some of these cypress trees, just to get that Mediterranean look. Now, of course, a major problem they would have with a film production here is that there's a busy road right next to this back lot. So I wanted to at least give them a little bit more uh, security and noise protection than just the small concrete wall. So we have some woods. If you thought that we would get through this episode without me spamming a bunch of trees, uh, you were definitely wrong about that. Now, where this service road transitions from pavement to grass, there's a little bit of a visual glitch. That's just part of how the asset works. So I just have to go in with a single piece of ploppable grass and cover that up. And then also use some dirt decals just to blend the grass road into the surroundings and make it look a little bit more used than it does with just the network asset. And now I said that we were going to have three back lots on this film studio. That's technically a lie because we're going to have a fourth one here. It's just a tiny little spot. Uh, there's nothing actually built here. It's just a blank space for them to be able to build an outdoor set if they wanted something outdoors for whatever reason. So they probably bring, you know, some kind of centerpiece for a scene or whatever and plop it down here and just film whatever they wanted to do in natural daylight. 
And then to fill in this gap over here, we have a few more artist trailers. Maybe these would be for makeup or costuming or whatever. But I felt like there weren't quite enough of these kind of random little lots scattered around. So I just have a few more here. There's also a little covered area. I'm not sure exactly what goes on there. But if you want to stay out of the rain, I guess you could go hang out under there. Just need to fill in this last gap with the trees and then define the outer boundary of the film set with another fence over here. Uh, and because it's not up against a major road like the other ones, it's just a standard security fence with some barbed wire. So that's really it for the main part of the build. So all that remains now is, well, we're going to do some lighting in a moment. But first, I want to put down those golf cart bus lines that I was talking about. So I initially start with the tour line, just kind of trying to stop by each of the major important parts of the film studio. It doesn't actually have to carry people around and, and have it be functional in terms of like making the film studio work. Um, so I just try to pick out the points of interest and then add four golf carts and they start running around, which is really nice. And then I also add a second line that is actually intended to kind of simulate the movement of people around the film studio in these little golf carts. So it stops at pretty much every single important part of the studio, like the various sound stages, all the back lots and the different offices. And seeing them all drive around just really brings the place to life. So just a few smaller details to take care of that I'd forgotten now that we've done the lighting. So that means we're basically at the end of the episode. Uh, I did prepare a little bit longer of a cinematic than usual. Uh, I thought it would be fitting to do that for an episode about a film studio. So I tried to make it somewhat cinematic. I tried to make the cinematic cinematics. Who would have thought? Anyway, so this has been the 50th episode of Toto Santos. Uh, whether you've been here for all 50 of them, whether you've been here since Northrum Creek, or whether this is your first episode, I want to thank you so much for watching this episode of Toto Santos. I really hope you enjoyed your time in the city today, and I absolutely cannot wait to see you on the next one. Uh, but first, we're going to add a few houses just to kind of fill some of the gaps here. Nice. All right. Bye bye.
deseaba quedarme en Todos Santos porque iba a fotografiarlo. Mentiras. Mentiras. Aún no tengo respuestas sinceras. Y así salgo del Hotel Central, esperando un milagro. Pero este nunca llega. Solo llega la lluvia. ¿Por qué huí? ¿Por qué estoy aquí sin ella? ¿Y las respuestas? ¿De dónde vendrán? ¿Acaso de los horizontes de las ciudades? ¿De la luz? ¿De la noche?